Over the past six months, my team and I have been all over the country checking out your best restaurant nominations. And tonight, my competition continues, this time to find the best North African. North African food is like no other. The careful layering of different spices results in wonderfully aromatic dishes. One mouthful can really transport you to a completely different world. The best restaurants will mix gutsy flavors with rich, sweet, and intricate combinations of spices to deliver dishes that will excite all the senses. I'm hoping tonight's contenders will show what this fantastic cuisine has to offer. Tonight, my two favorite North African restaurants will battle it out for a place in the semi-finals. From central London, it's Momo, a glamorous celebrity haunt as renowned for its vibrant atmosphere as its food. We've got one more mission, Zelu, table two. We've got a great team and a great feeling and great passion, and we, we're going to win it. The Momo machine is taking on Azu from Hammersmith, West London, a small family-run restaurant loved by the locals. Vas-y, t'as ton lamb. Voilà. Yes, I think I am the best. I would love to see someone challenging me. I predict a furious fight as two London restaurants take each other on in three extraordinary challenges. The first is every restaurant's worst nightmare, 30 hungry diners who will arrive and order all at the same time. First, they're heading for Momo, tucked away behind London's Regent Street. It's run by a very passionate northerner, Dave. He's been cooking since the age of 15, and he now heads up a brigade of 26 chefs. This restaurant's also been visited by some serious A-listers, from Madonna to Gwyneth Paltrow. And if they can look after those kind of customers, my diners today are in for a real treat. Hey, David. Gordon, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. So the secret success of Momo has been what? We all work together as a team, and we create, we create an atmosphere and hopefully delicious food. Yeah. Opened 13 years ago, its excellent food, stylish surroundings and party atmosphere quickly established Momo as one of London's most fashionable restaurants. As soon as you enter, it's like a theatre. You come in, you see the atmosphere, you see the decor, you see the buzz, you want to get involved. We get lots of film stars, lots of footballers, politicians, lots of, you know, people want to go through the back door. What I love most about Momo is you feel comfortable straight away. And the atmosphere is it's quite sexy. I need one lamb tagine, no coriander, three minutes, chef. 37-year-old David has cooked in kitchens all over the world. Cooking's been my life from, from the age of 14 and a half, 15. I weigh table 50, tagine lamb, sirloin steak, medium rare. Yes. During his travels in Morocco, David fell in love with North African food. I love the passion of Moroccan cuisine. I think it's great flavors. Everybody thinks Moroccan cuisine is couscous and tagine. It's vast. Assisted for seven years by French sous chef Philippe, David gives traditional recipes his own personal touch. It doesn't look like a creme brulee. That's delicious. Only a Yorkshireman would fucking fry a creme brulee. But it works. David, that's some of the best food I've tasted so far in this competition. Make sure that you give my diners the exact experience you've just delivered to me. Now, Momo is about to be put through its paces because my ravenous diners have arrived, all expecting food and service fit for London's glitterati. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Momo. And the service shouldn't pose a problem, as front of house manager Murad has a team of nine waiters. This place deals with big numbers easily, so they can become a little bit complacent because there's only 30 diners coming in. And sometimes restaurants get bad reputations for just looking after the, the A-listers and forgetting the real customers. So first ticket on, yeah? Oh, they want scallop, one mishwi, zaluk. One fish a day, two momos, medium. Yeah, sure. As first orders arrive, head chef David directs his brigade like a conductor with an orchestra. Don't start 14, don't start six year, please. Don't put all nine past here at the same time, please. Don't. More crispy, that past here. Two minutes past here. Make sure the first three or four tables go fast and slow down. There are three starters. Moroccan aubergine caviar with mixed peppers, wood pigeon pastilla, a delicate North African pie, and scallops with aubergine chutney and a fresh herb salsa. David's on fire, and the first starters are out within minutes. Any problems anywhere? Any? Just felt we're really sort of rushed. Rushed. Yeah, we rushed. And it looks like we're about to get our main course already. Damn. OK, well, let's hope the main courses don't come out as fast as the starters. Yeah, because it would be nice to relax a yeah. bit. It's the two ladies on the end here. Don't throw their main course out as quick. You know, hold it back a little bit. David is doing his best to control the flow of food. Send table one. And slow down on 14 and 6. But it's front of house who need to pay service and make sure every table gets their food at the right time. I've just told the team to slow down. Slow down, it's not a race. 
very good flavour combination. Light, cooked incredibly well. Yeah, very tasty. Absolutely delicious. Some of my diners are less impressed. Uh, gentlemen, the pigeon pastilla, how's that? It's OK, it's a bit too dry and um, not enough pigeon. Damn. So what was wrong with the pigeon? It was just a bit too dry and just... Oh, I didn't like it. Can you put one in for me? OK. The pigeon pasty is really authentic. You've got three layers. You've got, like, a uh, onion compote, mm -hmm. pigeon, and, like, scrambled eggs yep. and topped with almonds. It's not dry. If anything, it needs a bit more pigeon in there. For mains, there's a choice of three. Smoked lamb shank with couscous and spicy sausages, fish wrapped in vine leaves with white beans, and that North African staple, chicken tagine. Have the chicken tagine. Yeah. Tagine, you know, it's a terracotta dish. Of course, they're very traditional. I love the way you taste every tagine that's going out. He may be doing it every day, but you're still tasting it every time. The kitchen is focused, while front of house look busy but don't seem coordinated. David. Yep, six is a little bit impatient for the starters. How long are they waiting? Not long. There are lots of waiters, but it doesn't seem like the managers are controlling service, and some of my diners have slipped through the net. Um, the starters obviously haven't arrived yet. No. Everyone else is getting their main courses, so just wondering what's going on, because they're kind of hungry. How long are you waiting? About 20, 20, 20. 20. 25 minutes. Yeah, that's, that's too long. How long for that big table of six there with their starters? What's well, table six is coming in about three minutes. Three minutes. Just slowing it down so we not get everything at the way at the same time. Yeah, it's finding that balance. One table complaining is too fast, one table complaining is too slow. So you've got to just try to find that balance to who hasn't had their main courses. You know, when you get 30 customers at once, you want to save it like a party. It's very hard to pace yourself. One thing they're not is short staffed. They seem to have a manager for teaspoons, a manager for the bread, a manager for the lid, the couscous. So service should be impeccable today. So they should get that balance right. You can't serve a table, two courses, with one table, nothing. That's bad management. And far too many chiefs in the dining room and not enough Indians. In fact, there's more managers in this dining room than there are grains of fucking couscous. We'd definitely come again. We said that as soon as the main course came out, actually. But it's, uh, it's a lovely feeling here. We've been made to feel very comfortable. It did take quite a while to come and um, to receive my food. I, I don't like waiting that long to, to be honest. Um, but what we got was nice. Lunch is over, but I'm disappointed that service was inconsistent for some of my diners. Timing was all over the shop, and that was down to the the suited and booted, the managers, far too many managers, and um, a real lack of communication with the kitchen. And thank God David was on fire, because we had too many managers on the floor that couldn't spot who can serve what. OK, big test, that one. You're used to big numbers, so 30 diners should have been a walk in the park. How did it go for you? Went very well. I really enjoyed it, very well. Nice buzz. A great buzz. Great atmosphere. Yeah, great atmosphere. My biggest concern today was the fact that there was one table next to the big table that had their start as the main courses, and the six top had nothing to eat. When somebody hasn't got food in front of them and they're eyeing up the table next door to them, they get jealous. We had two complaints. The pasty for the pigeon, if anything. Maybe not so small in terms of dice so they can identify what they've got on the fork is a piece of pigeon. And you didn't sell enough desserts. I thought that was the best creme brulee I've ever tasted in a decade. Share the starter but make sure you save room for that dessert. That's how good they are. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to have feedback. And even if it's negative or not good feedback, it keeps you on your toes dancing. <laughs> We've got a great team and a great feeling and great passion, and we're, we're going to win it. We're here to win. It's the North African heat of my nationwide restaurant competition, and 30 hungry diners are about to descend on my second competitor. Here in Hammersmith is one of the best-kept secrets in town. This is a zoo, a romantic, small North African restaurant run by a lovely husband and wife team, Chris and Chris. Now, although it's small, it's punching way above its weight, a serious contender to go all the way in this competition. Hello, Chris. Good and good to see you. Likewise, my darling. Good to see you too. Look how small this place is. Chris! Oh, hello. This kitchen is the size of a cupboard. Look at it. It is, it <laughs> Thank is. God you're small and thin and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. They're scary. What are they on there for? That's the takeaway. Oh, the takeaway, OK. <laughs> Former headmistress Chris and her chef husband Chris opened a zoo 11 years ago. They work seven days a week running this 35-cover restaurant with the help of just five other members of staff. 
I've got Constantino Man couscous, two large plates, please. I mean, give her all to this restaurant. I do love working hard. I mean, you manage once a century to have sort of day off where you want to stand by, but you feel like guilty. Why am I away? And, and that guilt makes your day not a day off. You cook every day and it's, right? it's a passion. It's never a job for you, is yes, it? Yes, it is. What's the secret behind the success of your food? My wife. Your wife? <laughs> Chris. I don't know what to do without her, to be honest. She's very, very good support and believes really in what I do. For that, I love you more. Thank you. Chris learned to cook authentic North African food at his grandmother's knee in Algeria. This is the food of my childhood when I was living in Algeria. When she was cooking, uh, she's always, you know, having you next to her and you see her how you do, she's doing it. And it looks like he's still cooking with her pots too. When was the last time you bought a new pan? <laughs> That's a good question. What have you changed in 10 years in this kitchen? Uh, not much. Where's the fridge? I've got this one here. Ah, OK. All right. Wow. Okay, great. Sardines wow. and hummus. They're delicious. Merci. Very rare you see sardines today. Everyone thinks it's a oily fish and no one wants it, but that is delicious. Wow. And there's very few chefs that I know with a Michelin star that can cook like he can. I'm very passionate about my food. I mean, it makes me happy. Chris is such a perfectionist. He insists on overseeing everything that's cooked in his tiny kitchen. Sorry for taking over. No worries. Chris, like even he wants to check everything from the scratch. Even I think I work with him 20 years, he's gonna never gonna change. I do strive to be the best. Kuma. I will carry on doing it until till the end. Because this is it. This is my life. And his life is about to be turned upside down by my next challenge. OK, my diner's going to be here in just under five minutes. Yeah. I'm going to be watching everything. I'll be in the kitchen, watching how you work, and I'll be in the dining room, scrutinising everything. Your reputation is legendary. Merci. Tonight, it's on the line. Chris has just two hours to cook and serve two courses for 30 customers, quite a pressure for a small restaurant, and the clock starts now. Hello. Hello. Hope you enjoy your yeah. evening Very with nice. us. Thank yeah, you. thank you. <laughs> Three fish tashini, one lamb. Cod? Cod, fish, yeah. yeah. It's quickly become clear that it's not just the kitchen that's stuck in a time warp. Chris, so when you take the orders, there's no computers, it's all handwritten chicks? Yes. And you much prefer that as opposed to the 21st century? Well, it works. If it works, don't change it. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I doing? In a fluster, Chris has put the wrong table number on an order, and now a second order has come in for the same table. And table four, can you remember what he did? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold on, sir. First error of the evening, that, that's done twice. Don't worry, thank you. Uh, do you prefer this by handwritten like that? Is it easy for you? I got used to it. And... But if they, uh, two tables of four is confusing, right? Yes, it is. If you had a computer, you wouldn't have these problems. Yeah, no, that was my fault. I shouldn't Chris, have done it, yeah. He's your husband. Yes, I know. He's your head chef. <laughs> he's your toy boy. Look after him. <laughs> there is a choice of three starters. Marinated sardines with spicy sauce, grilled pepper salad with merguez sausages... No, la brique. ..and a brique, a Tunisian speciality pastry filled with tuna, potato and a soft egg, then deep-fried. Chris, Wait. these have been here for two minutes. The egg yolk is runny and I want them to experience the dining. What table oh. number? Table 15 away. Thank Service, you. please. Yeah. Jesus. And you're in the big. Thank you. You're welcome. So the secret, when you cut in, that, that egg yolk should sort of run all over the tuna. There it is. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Really, really good. Not too spicy, not too sweet. Really well balanced. OK. With the starters over, Chris has 30 complex mains to cook on his tiny stove. There are three choices of tagine. Go. Well, Go, 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 go. Cod with king prawns and seafood, chicken with olives and preserved lemons, or lamb in a spicy sauce handed down from his grandmother. I'm ready. Although he's got a sous chef and two others to help him, just as I thought, perfectionist Chris wants to do everything himself. OK, thank you. I'll do that. Don't worry. If he carries on like this, food will be delayed. Before I need two couscous. Two couscous. Two couscous. couscous. Now, why don't you do the couscous? Show me the couscous. Yeah, but he's doing everything. Three fish, yeah. Three fish, What's he doing in your section now? It's just in the plates. 
Can't you dress the place? You've got the one working there, pans everywhere. One, two, three of you do nothing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the chef. He doesn't want to. C'est bon, monsieur. C'est bon, monsieur. OK? Allez. Allez. Anyway, I can watch him cook. Wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, yeah, sure. Through the bars. There's more space out here than there is in there. You've got to take some of the responsibility away from him. Oh, come on. Huh? Right. It's incredible. I mean, I thought I was a control freak. Chris takes it to a completely different level, and he just cannot delegate. You're a control freak. Well, I'm not a control freak, but... But you're doing everything. No, well. No, well. I... I just want him to open up and talk. The danger of one person. Is it for fish, the gin, finger bowl, including? Oh, fuck me. I'm sure you can get your own finger bowl. Um, do you need them to get you a finger bowl? Do I... You do, yeah? One finger bowl, please, for the fish tagine. This is getting ridiculous. Front of house should be helping the kitchen, not hindering. Finger bowl. Oh, jeez. It's potentially catastrophic because he's so used to that one man band. Top of the tube station again. You have the drums, the guitar, the organ in the mouth, and he's just playing everything. And everyone's running around him crazy. Now he pushes him off his bench and goes in there and chops the peppers. And he's got about 12 things going on the stove. I mean, the guy's a freak. You can see him, can't you? Organising his own funeral, jumping in the coffin and saying goodbye to everyone, saying the prayer at the end. Closing the lid. Merci. Au revoir. Bowl. Thank you very much. Finger bowl, thank, thank you. you. Don't bother the kitchen for nothing. Excellent. Coming up to it, halfway there, and he won't offload. To go in and tell him to do something else. He's got his concentration. I think we need to keep his concentration. But why is he paying all those members of staff and he's doing everything on his shoulders? Chris not letting his brigade near the stove means some customers are still waiting for their mains. It's been a while now. Yeah, 25 minutes, I'd say. This guy won't accept help from anyone. I've got to get through to him somehow. Can you start talking to your brigade? Oh, wait. OK, guys. Let's Hello, start. how are you? Uh, yeah, come on. Hi. Come on, let's go. Shut up. Ali, let's get on with it. I've got the fish. You've oh. got everything. Voilà. Chris. Last table. Yeah. Look at me for two seconds. Voilà. Is there any chance we'll give them... that you can stand over here wait. and let your sous chef, wait. your second chef and your third chef, wait. cook the last table? Go outside and take some fresh air. Just out there. Just, okay. just to two minutes. You come over here and you go and get some fresh air. Okay. Out! Uh. Out! Right, let them do it. Okay. Just the last table. I'll kill you guys if you don't do it properly. You're gonna be dead in two weeks if you continue like this. Uh -huh. Let it go! Okay, last table. How long, uh, Lizzie? So three minutes. Come on, guys. Give one more. Leave him alone. Ah! He's fine. <laughs> that's something I have to work on. But, you know, when you love cooking, that's what you do. Fish. It's delicious. Mm. Really, really good. Very tender, very savoury. Mint really comes through. Full of flavour, a little bit of spice. Really nice. The food's wonderful. The place has got so much charm, so much character. <laughs> Such a great welcome. We pull it home here. It's a family-run place and we love it. Really good. Service is over and my diners are leaving happy. OK. Right, first of all, service, unique. Ladies, well done. Thank you. Yeah, even down to the handwritten tickets. OK, the first ticket went in, second yeah. ticket, two tables of four. Doesn't matter. And as for the kitchen... <laughs> oh, where do I start with you? Oh, Food is delicious, sublime, just amazing. My biggest problem is you. I want thousands more customers to enjoy your food, but you won't be around if you don't open up and delegate. <laughs> OK. I will. You'll be surprised at what it does. Merci. Well done. Seriously, well done. Really good. Thank you. Talk! Yeah. 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 What was good for me is realizing that I, sh I must delegate. You take it on board. Yeah. Put it this way, I will take more break. <laughs> <sighs> Guy's a genius. He cooks like an angel. He hasn't got all the fixtures and fittings and the posher dress, 
But what he has got is an amazing palette and for me, somebody to watch very closely. For Azu and Momo, my coach trip was like being hit by a hurricane. However, they both came through and they're still standing strong. Now, I've invited them to my office to meet up. With the help of secret diners, I've uncovered how these restaurants perform when they think I'm not around. I sent top food critic Simon Davis to Momo undercover, hoping they'd improved on their service problems. After I left Momo, I sent in my secret diners. <laughs> and they filmed your restaurant undercover. This is what happened. Hi there, I'm very well, how are you? Very good, thank you. Good. What's your name? Duncan. Duncan. We need to be out of here in about an hour and a half or something. Um, sorry, my English is so English is not good. <laughs> Just, I call someone. Ah, your English is good. <laughs> A little bit uh, better. A little bit better. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so let's go for the wood pigeon and the prawns, and then we'll have, I think, a tagine. So we've seen two of the waiters now. Are you ready for the main course? Sorry? Are you ready for the main course? I want at the same time. No, I mean, are you ready to order the main course? We've ordered already. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Ordered. Sorry. No, we're good. Sometimes we get overwhelmed and we just like to help each other. Yeah. Um, but of course, obviously here, lack of communication. Yeah, but if yeah, somebody's yeah. in a rush, that gets set across the board to everybody, doesn't it? In it terms of. Ah. The pastilla. Pastilla. Here. I don't think it looks wildly appetizing. It looks a little bit dry. The wood pigeon's been minced to such a degree you can't really distinguish it from any other meat. In my opinion, I think mincing up the wood pigeon is an, is an error. They didn't, they didn't mince out that little piece of wood pigeon. Shouldn't leave bones in it. Annoying. It's also bloody dangerous. Bone? Yeah, it's one of the things where... Clumsy? Yeah, it, but to, 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 be, to be honest with you, it does happen ever so often, but it, it's just yeah. care and attention. Could I have a little side order of tabbouleh? Tabbouleh? Yeah, just a little, a little bit of tabbouleh. Uh, we have, yes. It was almost as if he was too busy to, to deal with us. Oh, no, I wanted... Ah. I've got some of that. Is that some of the No, I, want, I wanted a little bowl of tabbouleh. Tab tabbouleh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it is a bit perplexing. We've had two occasions now where they've been a mistake because they're not communicating with each other. Excuse me. I ordered some tabbouleh. I wanted it was coming. To be, to be honest with you, I'm now confused about what I've told which waiter. Ah, it's my tabbouleh. Yeah. Thank you. So the tabbouleh's arrived, but it was a good ten minutes, and I had to ask two different waiters, and it got delivered by a third. Fragmented service, as opposed to two waiters looking after that. They've been interrupted four or five times with five different waiters. It's a busy restaurant, and, you know, you've got to... Nobody's took control. It's no excuse. They haven't filled our water up since we arrived. I'm just going to leave that there. It's in a very prominent position. We'll just see if they fill it up. Can I have a little more water? It's over an hour since I had any water, and now I've asked for some, and it still hasn't come. Excuse me? Can I have some water? Ah, the water. I mean, just because it's a Moroccan restaurant doesn't mean we have the water retention ability of a camel. <laughs> That's sadly. Oh. We've been waiting an hour for water. They shouldn't be waiting that long for water. Definitely not. I mean, for me, to watch that, it's very, you know, um, yeah, disappointing. He's met so many waiters, and none of them noticed that the, the, the water glass, they were empty. But you are somewhat overstaffed with bodies there. When you've had the eighth, the ninth, the tenth waiter hit the table, you feel a bit sort of, Jesus, you know, I'm just, you know, on a conveyor belt here and just being passed along to the next person. There's a restaurant that can transport you to another place. You can eat good food, perfectly good food. You can have fun here. And if going out and eating out in restaurants is about having fun and excitement and sharing that with your friends, then this ticks a lot of boxes. The food's good, bloody good. A few areas of tightening up. Service needs to come together. Glamorous, great, attentive individuals, but they need to play as a team. And then when the team's all singing off that hymn sheet, you've got one amazing restaurant. It's 
good to get constructive criticism. We yeah. go back and we sort yeah. it out. That's what we get paid for. Sometimes it honestly hurts the most, but you just get back up again. Exactly. You get more stronger. It's the North African heat of my best restaurant competition and charming family runner zoo from West London are going head to head with central London celebrity giant Momo. Don't start 14, don't start six year, please. Leave him alone! Ha! Ah, he's fine! <laughs> now it's the turn of a zoo to hear some difficult home truths thanks to my undercover secret diner. Food and recipe writer Sarah Durden Robertson has travelled in North Africa and sampled the cuisine firsthand. Azu will have to be on top form to impress her. What I'd like to tell you is that you've actually been tested twice. Have we? Mm, that's news. My undercover team Oi? went to your restaurant. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. And this is what happened. Hello. Table for two, Duncan. Yes, please. Thank you. Maybe, uh, well, maybe the sardines and the olives, I think. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Do you know what? Could I swap two of those? And... It must be already off already now. Sorry? It must be cooked now. Oh, could I have the prawns, though, instead, and the burak? I don't know if the chef will ask the chef. I don't know. <laughs> OK, if you could ask. OK. Mm. If the customer changes their mind, mm -hmm. that's their prerogative because they're paying. Mm -hmm. right? And we have to show that level of flexibility. He said it's already done. It's what's already done? The, the sardines and the bagnoles, it's already done. Lovely. Gosh, that was very Just quick. Said... OK, well, could I still... Do you mind if I still change? Change what? So I, I'd like to not have the sardines. What well, sardines is already done. OK, but could I order something else? What? As an extra order, then, could I just have the burek? Yes. Rule number one, never humiliate a customer. Yeah. And already she's been made to feel mm. vulnerable, yeah. awkward and very silly. Yeah. All because she just wanted to change her dish. Mm. Hello, yes. I'm sorry, this is just a bit too spicy for me. That is, the, in the menu, it's spicy hot. Yes, I know, I know, and he did say. Yes. But I thought it's actually just too spicy for me. I'll give you another one, but I charge you for this one. OK. That's no problem. Yeah. Wrong. When customers arrive in a restaurant for the very first time, yeah. and they make a mistake on their order, yeah. we have to be prepared yeah. to change. Yeah. You want the customers to come back, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch what happens next. This one, a steak away, maybe he can have it tomorrow or something. Ah, oh, that's really yeah. kind. Thank Voila. you. Yes, because I've hardly touched it. You're Voila. very good. Yeah, thank you. Voila. Thank you. Lucky you. That's all. Thanks. <laughs> no, that's incredibly quick. Voila. How did you do that? Well, you, you have to do it with him, eating the same time. So I just... Had to speed the process. Thank That's you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. This is absolutely delicious. I have been to Marrakesh. Some of the best food I've ever had. And this takes me right back. So you pulled it back in a very charming way. See. And look at the difference mm -hmm. in what happened when we changed that dish. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, I love this place. Chris is amazing. So charming. Mm. Your customers are in love with you and your food, yeah. OK? And if you want to charge them, yeah. ring me up and I'll pay for the fucking dish, OK? okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a good team. I trust my team. I believe in my team. And that did happen. It won't happen again, and that's it. Now is let's see what's coming ahead. Azu and Momo have found my test really tough, but honestly, I do admire their fighting spirit. Now it's time for the final challenge, as both teams cross London to come and cook in my flagship restaurant, and this is the very last chance they've got to shine. The test is to create one mind-blown dish worthy of my Michelin-starred restaurant. I want them to really push themselves 
and cook like they've never done before. Only one restaurant can go through to the semi-finals. This is what dreams are made of, a farmer's boy. I mean, I've been dad was a butcher, so this is, this is, you know, to make them proud as well. I want to win, I really want to win. Being in Ramsey's restaurant, it's an honor, and I'm very, very happy. I think um, I'm not gonna disappoint him tonight. It is a very, very important day. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Right, you're in this competition because both your restaurants are unique. The excitement behind the North African cuisine and what it can deliver in textures, flavors, spice is mind blowing. This is the dish of your life. Right. Because this is what's going to catapult one of you into the semi final. Make sure it's you. Good luck. I've asked them to come up with one exquisite dish featuring lamb, a star ingredient of North African cuisine. On one side with the zoo, you've got traditional. And on the other side, with Momo, you've got this new wave, a lifestyle of North African cuisine, and completely opposite ends of the spectrum. To help me choose who's best, both teams' creations will be served to highly distinguished guests, including Elsie Awusu, director of the Royal African Society, Labi Ramiki, head of culture and press at the Moroccan Embassy, and distinguished Moroccan chef and restaurateur, Joseph Balilti. The front of house teams from both restaurants are also dining here today. David is an excellent chef. I know everything's going to be delicious. It's like a holiday cooking for 20. I'm usually cooking for 200. So it should technically be a walk in the park. It's an enormous challenge, but I think he will cope very well. Sugar, hamis, where is the hamis? Can I have a tray? I mean, for God's sake. My one big concern today with Azu is he's been so used to cooking in his little bolt hole. It's a completely different set today. I hope it doesn't get the better of him. And he just stays focused. Are you a little bit lost in the kitchen with all the space? Or are you happy with something I so big? I am fine. It'll be fine. Excellent. Chris is cooking a traditional spicy lamb tagine served with couscous, but he's not stopping there. I asked you to cook a stunning lamb dish. Right. You've gone that extra mile and you're making bread. Right. The authentic semolina bread will be served with fresh hummus, a unique spice mixture of tomatoes, roasted peppers, chilies, and coriander. Two covers, table four. Oh, Azu, lamb tagine. Yes, chef. Momo, four stunning lamb. Yes, chef. Yes. Thank you. David from Momo is preparing a delicious roast loin of lamb with aubergine ragu, barley couscous, and a lamb's liver with harissa, wrapped in spinach and deep fried in tempura batter. I want to do something else in North African food. I want to show the next level, the next dimension we can go. Lamb's a bit tempura. And you're wrapping the liver in? Yeah, some spinach. We're wrapping spinach. the spinach and we deep fry it. Hopefully right. it's about 50, 51 seconds. Yeah. We timed it last time. Christ, so you really are pushing the boat out in a big way. This is incredible. He's pushing the boundary out with the lamb's liver, which is not everyone's cup of tea. I just hope in an hour's time that doesn't go back to bite him on the arse. Give me an estimated time for four tagine. Five minutes, Max, chef. If there's ever a night to work as a team, this is it. But as the pressure builds, Chris is up to his old tricks. No, no, just make it ready for me. I'll show you first. No, open. He's such a control freak. Uh, wait, wait, I'll check. He can't stop and he can't help himself. He wants to do everything. No, 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 no. You don't touch the plates. Yep, OK. Azu's first dishes hit the pass within minutes. Jesus. God, that was quick. OK, service, please. First table coming out, Rob. Let's go. Azu. Yes, chef. Four covers, table six. Pass. Chris. Yes, chef. It's dinner, yeah? Take your time, yes? Bad problem, chef. Uh, service, please. Let's go. Chris is cooking faster than fucking Usain Bolt runs. He's just totally focused, refuses to talk to me, and his head is steeped right in that couscous. And four tagine, here we are. Thank you. Let's go. Amazing, really. The bread is bread is like I remember my grandmother. Mm. That's happened. It tastes too amazing. Yeah, I'm very proud of him. The sauce was too much sauce for me. Ready for my taste? Yeah. Drowned. Yeah. Chef David's modern take on North African cuisine is a lot more sophisticated. Seven up, chef. Yeah, good. 
The five elements to his dish require delicate timing, and sous chef Philip is getting ahead of himself. Chef, no, don't slice too soon. Not ready. Not ready, chef. Not ready. Don't go. Yeah. I'll give you 90 seconds before I want the lamb. Come on, listen to David. Philip, slow down, please. Don't slice that lamb too early. Yes, sir. Yeah. When David gives you the call, yeah, on that juice, yeah, in amongst that couscous, not left on the board. Yes. Yeah. Please. And you know, Philip. You can leave it resting here. Leave it fat side down like that. Yeah. And all it's going to do is render and it'll stay nice and warm. See what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah? Yes. Slow that one down, Chef. Yeah. Chef, slow that one down. Yes. At this stage in the competition, David can't afford to make mistakes. Philippe? Yeah? One more aubergine. One's not good. Two more aubergine. Come on, I'm waiting. Yes, Chef. To get every dish perfect, Mumo need to pull together as a team. Couscous. Yes, Chef. Come on, Philippe, give me a hand dressing as well, please, yes? Yes. Yeah, like a proper teamwork. Good. In the middle, so you can work off both trays. There you go. Put the lamb on. Yes. Ah, fuck. And they've pulled it off. Uh, David, they look fantastic. Look very nice. Oh, beautiful colours. OK, service, please. Trays up, please. Table two, please, yes? Fantastically ornate-looking food. Let's see. Very nice. It's just that musty, smoky feel. It's something a bit different. We kind of all agreed that liver's not our favourite thing on the list, but the way he executed it was excellent. It melts in your mouth. Mm. Mm. The flavours aren't quite as complex. The liver is a little bit overcooked. It's a bit dry. It is, yes. The last of Chris's exquisite tagines are flying out of the kitchen. Take. He has just one table to serve. Here we are. Next, chef. That smells amazing. Delicious. Thank you. That was fast. It was good. Next. Yeah, breathe. Take some fresh air. Last table, David, yeah? Lovely. Well done. Keep the clue, chef. Well done, well done. Service is over, and it's time to find out what my distinguished guests think about these two extraordinary dishes, starting with Azu. Right. How was your lamb shank? The lamb shank was my favourite. As really? soon as I experienced that sauce, I knew that was it. Yeah. Authentic and delicious. I just enjoyed it for mm. what it was. Very nice. simple, perfectly blended. I dipped the bread in, first mouthful. Oh. I like them both, but nice. I thought the, the Momo dish was fresh, it was beautifully presented. It was just altogether delightful. I prefer the Azu dish. You could just imagine yourself being in the old sook. Definitely, I preferred, I mean, Momo's dish because the meat was very well cooked. Uh, I'm used to Moroccan cuisine because I'm Moroccan myself, so it is really a sort of uh, a nouvelle cuisine. The tempura liver, I was not expecting it to be quite as mouth-wateringly sort of melt on the tongue as it was. It was really, really delicious. I love the Azu dish. I adored the flavours. They were so Powerful. I wanted more. <laughs> My diner's comments confirm the brilliance of the food served here by both Azu and Mamo. I think the dish went extremely well. I tasted it. I'm very happy with it. I'm happy. Well, you know, there's always room for improvement. But what made me proud is we've come together. I'm really proud. Thank you, Chef. Both these teams of amazing chefs have approached North African cuisine in very different ways. Let's see if the traditional is going to beat the modern. Let's hope the tradition is better. Now I have an incredibly difficult decision to make because only one restaurant can go through to the semi-finals. My two top North African contenders, Momo and Azu, both from London, have thrown everything at the final challenge. They are both outstanding restaurants, but over the course of my three tests, they've both made mistakes. I'm about to tell one of them they've cooked in this competition for the last time. To help me make my choice, I need to taste both dishes, starting with David's from Mamo. It looks modern, 21st century, and stunning. Very pretty, almost too pretty for North African cuisine. Mm. Lamb's delicious. I mean, really delicious. Delicate, cooked beautifully. Liver, difficult one to get right. Not only that, but it's tempered, and you don't think of sort of um, fried liver with North African cuisine. However, the combination, baba manouche and the barley couscous works brilliantly well. I've got an issue with the liver. However, the lamb is cooked perfectly and it's a loin of lamb, so it's, it's been shown respect. Authentic, classic, untouched. Meat falling off the bone. That's delicious. 
I mean, really delicious. Lamb is just melting in your mouth. It needs to be a little bit more trimmed, excess fat removed. However, sauce is incredible. You can see there's 30 years of experience into that because it's just packed full of flavor. This is such an amazing contrast. And Momo's interpretation as modern, fresh, fragrant, delivers a big punch. Uncertain about the liver. Everything else, it is delicious. Azuz is rich, authentic, and just steeped with passion, like him. And right now, it's, I'm stuck. Do I go forward with the modernization of North African cuisine, or do I stay in the history of something classically done? It's too tight to call. Two fantastic North African restaurants, but only one can win a place in the semi-final. Right. What I saw today was two completely different dishes, but done with pride, history, and innovation. Azu, you stuck to your roots. I think you're back in Algeria. Yes, chef. And you're back with your mother and your your grandma, and you were you were there. Yes, chef. I can identify the authenticity, the classic style, and the richness of that. Beautiful. David, it's very rare to find a British chef cooking out of his comfort zone. But tonight, you came and you, you moved to goalposts. You modernized North African cuisine. And it was done with flair, which I didn't expect you to do. However, this round is not won on a single dish. Just think of the journey so far in this competition. Go back to the coachload of diners, turning up all at the same time. The pressure of serving all those guests in under two hours was a nightmare. Then all of a sudden you can let your hair down and let's get back to cooking. And then you've been secretly filmed. Both restaurants came through that test and they both had their highs and they both had their lows. Listening to the diners, Tasting both dishes based on everything we've done in this competition. The restaurant going through to the semi finals. Congratulations to Azu. David, don't stop that level of pushing to the extreme. Well done. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you. I'm gutted at the moment. Um, no, I'm gutted. No. I've got a lot of fight left in me. Give me a chance. I'll, just, I'll do it again. Congratulations. Yeah? Very, very proud. So pleased, because he, you know, it means such a lot. I'm sorry to see Momo go. David is a brave and passionate chef who is pushing the boundaries of North African cuisine. But Azu are a truly fabulous restaurant, and I can't wait to go back there. That's why they've gone through. Right now, this competition is only going to get tougher, and I hope they don't let me down.